To be honest, sloth reminds me of myself. I figured out that if I only use one plate, one knife, one fork, I'll have to wash them up so I can eat. And the washing won't pile up, so I realized I can mop the bathtub to avoid spending like 10 minutes cleaning the damn thing. Lazy people find fast solutions so they can sit around the rest of the time doing nothing. That reminds me of what Bill Gates said. He said, when hiring someone, hire the lazy person. They'll find a quick way to do something complicated. Using a plate? Just use the box your food came in. True sloth. <laughs> came in? That requires ordering. Just eat the food raw. <laughs> you forgot Envy, who was humiliated until it killed itself. This is true. Frozen food has boxes? That is true. You can also say you're a minimalist. Alright, so part 55 was Sloth Death Armstrong Pikachu Face. Let's not break, because we need, we need this in our lives right now. I still feel bad for Envy. See, when it comes to... And I had this discussion with a bishop when I was in high school. When it comes to Seven Deadly Sins, it doesn't make sense. How are Seven Sins more deadly than the rest. Each sin blown out of proportion can ruin your life and the lives of those around you. It was just a really convenient category that was, you know, used. So it doesn't make any sense. At the same time, humans themselves are created with certain attributes and faults. But at the same time, we are created in God's image. And if you listen to the stories of, you know, creation and Genesis and all that sort of stuff, a lot of the divine beings didn't want to bow to us, well, the ones that didn't, because we were flawed. I don't know about you, but Old Testament God and even in other religions, seems a little bit wrathful at times, a little bit prideful at times. And it begs the question, are these qualities that humans possess bad? Or can they also be good? It just depends how you use them. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of pride in what you do. It's only when it's excessive that it's a problem. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of envy if it gets you up in the morning and motivates you to work harder. It's only when it consumes you that it's a problem. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of lust. Without it, you know, the human race would have died out a long time ago. Let's face it. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of wrath. You need that, otherwise animals would have eaten, you know, our tribes or however we lived in years and years ago. You need a little bit of that in order to get shit done. It's only when it consumes civilizations and people and causes wars and things like that that it's a problem, you know? There's nothing wrong with a little bit of sloth because if you don't rest, you will eventually overwork your body and it will crumble. It's only when you overdo it and you never get out of bed and, you know, all these other things that it's bad. So, all these deadly sins are a little bit like food. And greed itself is not always necessarily bad because if you have absolutely no greed at all, you could be very poorly provisioned for, let's say, winter, or a bad crop season, or bad weather. So a little bit of every one of these qualities can be a good thing. That being said, that, that, that just means, you know, what is that? Measurement, or everything in moderation. Everything in moderation can be good. I don't know. Just a thought. Maybe the very qualities that are unchecked could 
when they're properly checked, be very good for us. It's not always women or money. Uh, there's different motivations, but yeah. Which is why I prefer agnosticism, where it says faith in God is misplaced, that supporting each other is infinitely more valuable than worship. Well, if you look at the core message of um, religions and what a lot of them will preach, when you boil it down, it goes down to treat each other how you would want to be treated and, you know, with love and respect and kindness and mercy. And, you know, well, I think that's the main one, really. If everyone strives to do better and treat everyone nicely, we wouldn't really have all these problems, would we? You know, instantly problem solved. <laughs> it's only when we get consumed by something that there is a problem. If there weren't people that were just consumed by greed and wanting to hoard resources because of some inadequacy complex that they have that formed at some point, uh, there'd be enough resources to feed everyone on the planet. You know, if we, ha if we didn't have uh, megalomaniacs running the show and news corporations and Hollywood and wanting to be politicians with absolutely no sense of how economics works or anything like that, you know, we wouldn't have countries falling apart if we didn't have people that were traumatized by, you know, uh, post-World War II uh, wanting to create dictatorships and wage war and have their revenge on the world. We wouldn't have, you know, some of the dictatorships and people republic of other nations, you know, trying to ruin the planet and all these other things. Like, those things would just cease to be very quickly. It's just these unchecked things that are problems. And more often than not, it's a few key people that create an echo chamber of ideas that just blow out of proportion. If you read back and you listen to a lot of accounts of people that survived World War II, you find out that a lot of the people that were involved in atrocities had no idea that they were part of these atrocities. They turned a blind eye because they thought, oh, that's, you know, that's normal, or they didn't really see the big picture. It was very easy to follow that hype and follow that train, and you know, no pun intended, but, you know, follow that rhythm and what everyone else is doing. You just don't think it's the pack mentality, right? Everyone's marching to defend their country. You don't think for a minute that you're actually expanding territory and, uh, you know, the cleanup squad behind you with the flamethrowers is actually burning people alive. You don't think that. You just think that, I don't know, fucking maybe they're there to, I don't know, get rid of uh, trenches and stuff, you know? That's that's where these travesties come from. It's not all of the people involved. It's usually key people that, you know, turn this thing into a shitstorm. Guys, let's jump into episode 56, Return of the Führer. Oh my god, this discussion fits in perfectly to this title. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> let's just watch. Ah, here comes this opening. Just thinking about this, Armstrong, Mustang, and, you know, everyone could just wipe the floor with all these guys. Up until now, they've just been injuring people and incapacitating them and demoralizing them, you know, to have a clean victory while minimizing casualties and just, you know, reform the soldiers, as we've seen with Armstrong, who was just able to take command of people that were sent to kill her. Uh, a lot of these soldiers are just pretty much, you know, on autopilot following protocol and orders. And, you know, it's just, they're effectively sheep, sheep with guns. And then you've got someone like Wrath that just walks in that's going to use them as cannon fodder and pawns. He doesn't care. So, uh, I mean... <laughs> let, 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 let's just say uh, old Kuma would just say well fucking hell Mustang just burn them all alive problem solved then you've only got to deal with wrath um, but throughout watching this anime we keep watching the stories of different people and seeing that every single one of these people potentially has a family and a daughter and a son and 
a wife that would miss them and all this other shit and you try to make me feel bad about the fact that I would indiscriminately just kill all of these combatants because I just justify that they knew what they signed up for when they put on a uniform and held a gun. Um, it's not an easy solution. <laughs> What's the solution? Challenging Bradley to a one-on-one -on -one to the death? Would he even accept that? Who would you send in for that? You know, the, the <laughs> this this anime really makes you question your your uh, your moral compass. Let's just watch before I uh, have an existential crisis. Jaeger means hunter. Is this a flashback? Oh no, flashback episode! Just calm down. We need to have a civil conversation about this. Please, give me a chance to talk to you. And then I'll listen to everything you have to say. Oh! Of course. I promise. We're all in this together. Is this, is this Hohenheim or is this the thing in the flask? It, it makes you wonder what their previous conversations were before they're falling out. should at least take the time to bury him. Whoa! Wait! He's still alive! I love how they don't even check if he's alive. But then again, it is the middle of the desert. But still, you assholes, you would have buried him alive! Impossible! Just hang on! Hey! Are you alright? Water! Get him some water! <laughs> Just drink it nice and slow. Only take little sips. Can you understand us? We're traveling merchants from Xing. What were you doing out here in the desert? I've got no place to go. No place to return. I had to get as far from Xerxes as I could. Too scared. This is right off the thing, though. I know you are. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't stop him. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, surgeons. <laughs> Imagine this out of context when the episode first aired. If it was 2021, the internet would have a shitstorm. There was Surgeons, the renowned master carpenter. He was often called to the palace for repairs. Do you remember him? His son Dazur had a deep admiration for his father. He worked hard to follow in his footsteps. And then there's the florist, Kaya. I've rarely met such a compassionate woman. Sari, the stable hand, could never get his fill of liquor. Trust me, I've had to drink for him. Tommy's boyhood dream was to become a respected scholar. Gita Roosh worked as a cook. He was fired one time for feeding a starving vagrant without charging him. And my fellow slave, Andal, he bitterly considered me his rival because I was favored by our master. Sal was somewhat of a remorseless reprobate. He was awaiting execution. He was probably the most determined to get one last shot at you. And just how would he go about that? Huh. Every single one of these tortured souls has now invaded your being. Mm. 
You're contaminated, and each soul inside you is working with me, working to see your destruction. I'm supposed to believe that your Philosopher's Stone has individual wills? Those souls were reduced to mere energy. I'm not surprised you'd find it impossible. I was convinced I'd be driven mad trying to individually sort out the ocean of screaming voices within me. But I had plenty of time to converse with each and every one of them. That was one of the few benefits of this undying body you gave to me. You actually spoke with them? That's right. Unlike you, I listened to what they had to say. <sighs> it took time, but I managed to learn the name of every last soul. 536,329. The people you trapped inside of me. Return to the nothing you were born of. Your flask is broken, dwarf. We will destroy you. And that container of yours is the first to go. All we have to do is tear through that leather bag you designed to look like me, and you'll be reduced to dust. Well, fuck. You will suffer the pain of the thousands of lives you've ruined. This is such a... One of them saw humans as nothing more than fuel or energy. And the other one saw every single individual person in that city as a person. Each with their own hopes, dreams, aspirations and situations. Even though he was working in the temple, he didn't sort of close his eyes to the outside world. He paid attention to it. He cared about it. This is this is the, this is pretty much the contrast of a highly empathetic human versus a highly self-centered egotist. That they're complete polar opposites of each other on that fundamental level of how they view the outside world. It's fucked, right? I mean, just thinking about it, if someone granted one of us immortality, and we know what the price tag is, most people would... Uh, I forgot the word, but convince themselves, oh well, they're dead, at least something good came out of it. They would rationalize it that way. Whereas he feels guilty for each individual life he has in him. Which is why he doesn't abuse it. Because he knows the value of each individual soul that's created him. Whereas other people fucking don't. They don't even know how many lives they have left in their Philosopher's Stone before they run out of, you know, fucking recovery. They don't even consider it. They just abuse the shit out of it. Damn, this hits hard. They sold me when that cook gave milk to the stray kittens. They, 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 they killed me. They fucking killed me on that. The bad habit of condescension in your many years, haven't you, Owen? I. Well, this How is, is talking. it possible you can live without your skin? Did you honestly believe you're the only one capable of evolving? I told you that I intend on becoming the perfect being. Are 
you serious? He's storming the front? Do they really expect me to make a complete mockery of myself by entering through the back door of my own palace? <clears throat> Infantry men, keep back! Run! Impossible! Firing you idiot! What is that? Oh right, you found the weak spot. Take over the controls! Uh, yes, sir. That's why tanks use cameras nowadays. Damn. What are you doing, you idiot? It's a very sad thing, but during uh, World War II, when Germany was attacking Serbia, and you had a, you had the military, but you also had a lot of you know villages and other people like that that weren't as well armed. You would have tanks, and you would literally have these people. Well, they were, they were poorly. They were poorly equipped. They were not soldiers. They were villagers. They were peasants. They would literally take their shirts off, their jackets off, whatever they had, and they would throw it into the gears of the tanks. And that would sort of jam the gears eventually. Um, and then we'll just pretty much sit on top of the tank waiting for the person to open up to see what the fuck is going on. You can guess what happened after that. Well, that's a boss. <laughs> no blood on that blade anymore. I don't believe it. The old bastard just took out a tank. Damn. <laughs> No, Captain Buccaneer! What's the issue here? Your country's leader has returned. Now open the gate for me. Remember we're watching. Re Zero, and I was like, what would you do if you had infinite revives? And I'm like, I don't know, spend a few weeks trying to master martial arts and blades? Here's what happens when you master martial arts and blades. I mean, minus, you know, the regeneration, but, you know, he's dodging a lot of the attacks. I said open the gate, Lieutenant Foreman. <laughs> Please forgive me, Colonel Mustang, but it looks like I'm dying here. That's enough of that. See, he's... <laughs> that look isn't the look of... He's genuinely impressed that he has the balls to stand his ground and die for what he believes in. He didn't expect that much of him. The weak point in any security system is humans. They'll typically open a secure vault door to save one person begging for help and risk the lives of everyone else in there. And this guy had the balls to actually die. I think that eyebrow raise was... surprise? But also being impressed that he never thought he had it in him. You don't have to be on the same side to acknowledge someone's... I think... 
I think respect in a sense, yes. Give me Colonel Mustang. But it looks like I'm dying here. That's enough of that. You can't die a heroic death crying like a coward. Don't even think for a second you're gonna die a more manly death than I am. I've got plenty of fight left in me. How ridiculous. Humans always make a point out of being foolishly stubborn. Ah, you got that right. You know, they always get so frantic in the heat of the moment. <laughs> like it's gonna do them any good. But pathetic as it may be, and they sure are, I still prefer to side with the underdog. Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, this should be good. Full Metal Alchemist. Quick, give him a sword. Damn it. It seems like these guys got their second wind as soon as the Fuhrer showed up. Yes, if that's they what. Get past this, they'll take the main gate. We that's... can't let them through no matter what. That's called morale. It's very important. Go on. Yes? Well, that's incredible news! I just got a phone call that your husband is all right! The Fuhrer is alive! <laughs> that might not be a good thing. Oh, thank you. Are you okay? Uh, yes. I'm just so overjoyed. Quick, turn on the recording! I was so scared that he was dead. He's not badly injured, is he? They haven't informed us yet. We've only been told he's in combat with the Briggs soldiers at Central Command. We'll have to pin this on Briggs. We what? We have to protect the Colonel. Uh, yeah, about that. Good luck. <laughs> you, you think he doesn't suspect Mustang? It's a relief to hear His Excellency is okay. Yes. I just pray that Selim is safe as well. About that if little devil Fuhrer child. Is battling soldiers from Briggs, that leads me to believe General Armstrong is leading the coup. Wait, General Armstrong? Huh? Fucking pit it on the slobs. You start one world war and the world gives you a shit for the rest of the time. Look, the Archduke got shot because he went to a fucking convenience store for a sandwich. Had he not stopped at a goddamn convenience store for a goddamn sandwich, he would have been fine. Another thing, the clothes that he was wearing made it impossible for his security detail to open him up and apply pressure on the wound. Like I always say, the best dressed are typically the first to die in battle. Ah, oh, she was recently transferred to Central, wasn't she? The yeah, they're coming! Remains. How much of the senior staff is in league with her? So he's alive. I guess that's what should be expected of a homunculus. We should have known that publicly siding with Fuhrer Bradley could backfire on us. It just feels so wrong. Having to blame General Armstrong. It looks like they've got us completely surrounded, too. So I've noticed. Collapse the stairs. What do you think they'll do to us? I don't know. Right now, the whole city thinks we're on the Fuhrer's side. So we've at least made it difficult for them to attack us outright. But it won't take too long for Bradley to call our bluff. When that happens, they'll probably kill us right away. Wait, even with his wife here? I honestly doubt that he has any real attachment to her. <laughs> even to a guy like me, that's cold. Even to a guy like me, that's cold. You've got a woman whose entire life is her husband and her kid, both of whom are, I don't know, Fucking the equivalent of the devil's children in this anime. I mean, that's cruel. 
That is cruel. I get the political cover, but Jesus Christ, man. He specifically chose her? Long time no see, Green. We'll see. If you had any sense at all, you would have stayed out of my sight for good. Yeah, my avarice tends to make these decisions for me. And right now, I want your life, Wrath. Okay, Dante. <laughs> Who's this guy? Our backup? Rumor has it that you died a fiery death in a train accident. You look unscathed to me. Let's just say that I have sharp eyes. It only took a moment for me to evaluate a path among the falling rubble. The rest of it was just a matter of footwork. Oh, fuck off. However, the years do take their toll. The whole ordeal left me with a few aches and pains. Oh, fuck off. He's griping about being old and he's capable of this. Yeah, you should see him at his peak, Jesus Christ. You're Ling Yao, right? Hey! I haven't seen you since we hid out in that crummy apartment. It's good to see you, Warrant Officer. It's Lieutenant! Oh, whatever. I owe you one, so I'll give you a hand. And I've got a score to settle. <laughs> the truth is, we both got a grudge to settle with this self-righteous old bastard. Come on! You might want to get out of the way. Trying to hide in my blind spot, huh? <laughs> I'm surprised that I didn't think of it, but the prince gave me a few good pointers on how to fight you. How helpful. Unfortunately for you... Oh my god, he did the Kampachi! He's gaining the upper hand. This is starting to look bad. <laughs> Why haven't you converted your whole body? Damn it! Stay out of this! Oh, that son of a bitch. No! Son of a bitch! He's using the reflection off the blade? Nice! Captain! Well, that was the kill shot. Got some rather impressive abs, huh? <laughs> now what are you gonna do with that's your fancy sword play? Are you trying to get killed, dumbass? Then again, it's slow as fuck. The help. Now let's see. <laughs> Not exactly my weapon of choice, but I guess that I'll just have to make do. You piss me off now, old man. <laughs> Damn, man can tango. I was told the Fuhrer has returned. Affirmative. He's currently engaged in combat with an unidentified man, sir. Okay, serious question. Why isn't Grey turning his entire body into the thingy? He did it with his fight with um, Ed, so surely he can do it. I mean, there must be a reason. I get that it's it stops his recovery, but can he cut through that form? It sacrifices speed and he needs speed for Bradley. But it exposes him so much! <laughs> it exposes him so much! 
Send in all available forces. We'll wipe out these worthless Briggs traders, and then we'll rescue the Fuhrer. Uh huh. Call in the reinforcements. We're retaking the main gate. Yes, sir. Go, 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 go! <sighs> oh no! That's what happens when you're greedy and you're the one that wants to kill, as opposed to just stalling him till backup arrives. They're sending another battalion up the shaft! <sighs> Collapse it! Sorry, but I'm kind of busy if you haven't noticed. You're gonna have to deal with it. Uh, I am? But we've hardly got any men left here. What the hell am I supposed to do? Just figure it out! That's easier said Captain, than done. Hang in there! This is what this is what happens with freaking fucking sheep. They don't know what to do. We have people coming! We need an order! Well, you've been under the command of a very capable general for a long time. Shouldn't you have learnt something by now? But he usually tells us what to do! Gulag. I guess it really is up to me. Hey! You men get Captain Buccaneer someplace safe on the double! Right! Yes, sir! Grab that gun! We're moving it! <laughs> yes, sir! No, 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 no. What you're supposed to do, because that's just gonna overheat the gun and eventually you'll run out of ammunition, is you're supposed to stagger your fire. Burst fire and also give them the opportunity to think that they could land a shot and rescue some of their injured people that aren't dead. That's how you maximize your kill count while avoiding overheating of the barrel and running out of ammunition. Has World War One and Two taught you people nothing? Damn it! Those bastards have only got two machine guns up there and we're completely pinned! They've got us trapped in here! Do we have any men inside we can call? Have them force open the gate from their end. So, I have no idea what the fuck happened, but all of a sudden I had money on my bank account to subscribe, so here I am. Wait, didn't someone gift you a subscription? I appreciate it, but didn't someone gift you a subscription? Just saying. Did you need to double do it? Because if you double did it, you should have gone to Patreon. But I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, no one gifted you. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. That's gotta hurt. It's gotta hurt. But thank you. I really do appreciate it. But well, you did get your vote, but I do appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Sir, this is the 3rd Sovereign Battalion speaking. Come in, Central Command Garrison. Do you read me? This is Central Command Garrison. What? I don't understand. Give it to me. This is Commander Gamelin speaking. Our men are stationed at the main gate. Is it possible for you to open the gate from within the fortress? Negus, sir. The base has been overrun by some kind of monsters. Did you say monsters? What are you talking about? <laughs> what is that? What the hell's going on? Wait, I think I see something. Ah, oh, the CQC master. Wait a minute, that's Thingo. Soyphon. No, that's Bleach. Um, whatever's going on. Whatever the fuck her name is. Sound too good. See, you got me thinking about Bleach now. Land fun, that's the one. No wait, she's on the ground. Damn it, two old people fighting. Nice moves, old man. And thanks for the help. Really saved my ass. I wasn't trying to save your ass. I was saving the body of the young lord. Well, it's the same ass. Your sickening chi is radiating from the prince's body. Although, it did actually help me to locate you. So, why don't you tell me who this is we're fighting? Especially since neither of us could leave a scratch on him. That's Fuhrer King Bradley, old man. <gasps> oh, shit! Well, this is the first time I've actually laid eyes on him. 
Oh, right! The granddaughter arm thing. This should be good. Okay. Okay. So Control that rage. I know you want to rip out his eyes and shove him up his ass, but you gotta control that rage. So now I know what the bastard who took my granddaughter's arm looks like. There it is. You gotta be careful with that adrenaline. It makes you so hasty. Being angry in a fight is probably one of the worst things you can do. It makes you too predictable. It is, it is bad. It's very bad. You, you can't. It, it's very bad. At least you don't feel anything. You actually want to feel things. You just want to reprogram yourself to create it into a self-perpetuating loop in combat. Like every time you get hit, your goal should be to hit the other person harder. As opposed to not feeling anything. Not feeling anything is dangerous. Because your body can still fail. I had to learn that the hard way. I learned that the hard way. Oh, I'm telling you now, I learned that the hard way. I I was I I was that was yeah, I was in when I, was that Indonesia? Was that Indonesia was that I'm 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 messing up the tournaments. I think it might have been Indonesia. I think it might have been Japan. I think it was actually Japan. Yeah, I think it was the world tournament in Japan. I ended up getting out of my pool and I got put up against the sensei of the Chinese national team. And he was a bit older, so he was definitely not in his prime. I think he was late 30s or very early 40s. So I definitely had uh, the advantage of youth on my side. And my mindset was very... And at that point, it was accurate. I had conditioned my body to the point that you could punch it all you want. You could kick it all you want. It's perfectly fine. And so I went in there gun ho two and a half. The fights were four minutes. So for about three minutes something, he wasn't really landing any hit that was useful on me. He was getting worn down. Um, I was working on his outer thigh, his inner thigh. I was working on his shoulder. So he was definitely getting worn out significantly. Um, and I thought, look, the damage that he's outputting doesn't hurt. He hits me, I just hit him harder. It's starting to show I was hitting him in the same spots. You know, he was being worn down. And it came to it that I went pretty much for, I think it was a sort of, yeah, it was a punch. It was too much of a punch. He let it go through, and he managed to knee me in the kidney. And that was that was when the fight literally flipped on his head. He kneed me right in that kidney. In that moment, I saw red. I've never seen red before that point, but I saw red. And the fight went from, oh shit, I've got him, to, oh crap, if he hits me there again, I am doomed. It was sharp, it was painful, it was radiating. My body was in shock, but I was able to continue. But my mind was was gone. I wasn't able to maintain the focus. I was semi-defensive in that point. It gave him the upper hand, and he managed to clip it a second time. And at that point, the fight timed out. But the judges that were there, being that it was a world tournament, they definitely spotted it. They definitely spotted it. And they pretty much determined that if the fight went another round, I would have definitely lost. Up until that point, I was, I was completely fine. But as soon as he got that knee in... Mm. At that point, I learned a very important lesson. 
You can condition the shit out of your body, but there's certain points on it that you can't do shit about. The joints, the kidneys, the neck, those type of things, nah. You want to be conscious of it, you want to feel the pain, because you need it. You need it. You definitely need it. You don't want to not feel that. Because if your body fails on you, you are out. <sighs> I've, I've had it happen. I've had a, I've, <laughs> I've had a completely deflated lung. And then the guy just collapses the second one. At like one lung collapsed. You, you get dizzy and you're losing oxygen. You should technically tap out, but you know, do that. You lose the second one, you basically, you're going to black out. Your body just fails on itself. You're out of oxygen. You're out. You're gone. <laughs> Imagine not being able to feel any of that. Nah, that doesn't work. I, this is not a preview. A man must come to know his enemy as clear. Nah, 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 that's not a preview. That's a thing. All right, quick little break and we're watching episode 57, Eternal Leave. Hey, did I hand you a shrinking potion by accident? I... I could have sworn that was the gender swapping one. Don't be hating. She's fun size, that's all. She doesn't even have to get on her knees to blow. You want to add anything to that conversation? Nope, I'm good. In fact, I think your new size makes you an even more formidable and stealthy ninja. 